No, Hello? We, we Is there a level? Yeah, yeah we, we, we reduced the level well, in order to... to... Uh, okay. to uh, is it about, do both sides flash now or just one? Both sides. Both? Well, it's too high. <laughs> well, uh, first one, as I say, took either... I can't remember. I know it took a very short time, either a, a, a day or a week or something. Then the second one took, uh, which is much longer than the form that's given there. The film is actually about a, at least a half an hour long, except that it was cut down to make it match a recording by Dizzy Gillespie, uh, which I believe is called, uh, is called Algo Bueno, or something, oh, uh, Guachiguaro, that's what that uh, record was called. That's a much longer film. It's hundreds and hundreds and it's a, you know it's several. It's a real this big, the original one. Does the original still exist? Well, I don't know. I mean, is that the question that came uh, up? That was in your uh, apartment. apartment, yeah. So that uh, that took maybe a year to make, and then the next one, as I say, the, the last one of those hand paintings I worked about five years on. Then I gave up on that particular thing. Then so, so it was a period of about ten years of sheer hand painting. Oh uh, no, but let's see, let's say five. Uh, six, seven, maybe eight years of that. Uh, how many more films than the ones listed? I think one through six or one through five. Uh, well, there would be short films made in other techniques because I, the, I developed certain really complicated hand painting techniques that I only made short versions of. Such so techniques were? Well, for example, painting the whole film a certain color and then smearing Vaseline on it, then taking a stylus and scraping designs off, which was possible to get a lot of, like, uh, spirals and uh, curvilinear designs of a certain sort, by, which I was never able to get by the cutting of the uh, masking tape. And uh, then spraying uh, bleach into the place that had been scraped off, I, I think Clorox or something like that, on that order, some kind of a... Mm -hmm. something similar to Clorox, which would then bleach off the background material where it had been scraped off and then washing the Clorox out and spraying another color into the place that the groove was. Now I only made like short samples of that sort of material but or ones where, where I kept portions where the whole thing in order to demonstrate how it was done I made up special reels that were partially say had the masking tape still left on them partially first coat and there, anyhow, there's thousands of feet, at least, of material that, that, uh, that was not printed ever, or in several entire films, and of course a number of those films are missing totally. Uh, one of the best collage films is, is missing, see. Uh, did you edit much after you... No, I never did that at all, except to cut them down, like that second uh, one that shows the balls falling, which was, a, as I say, like a, maybe a, uh, at least... Uh, 1,200 feet long originally. It was then cut down to 100 feet to make it match to a uh, specific record. And that, what, what Jonas calls a magic feature or something, was about six hours long in the original form, but then it was edited down to a, first to a two-hour version, and then down to a one-hour version. Uh, the, all, all, all of my later films were never quite completed. I mean, most of the material, I would say, was never shot because it became like, uh, you know, the thing dragged on too long and there was enough made. Well, how about the optical? Well, those two optical ones, which would be the, those were made for the Guggenheim Foundation. That was that, uh, I think they're obvious which ones they are. Yeah. It was the fourth one that's on the reel, and then this three-dimensional film was made from the same uh, batch of stencils. You received the grant from the Guggenheim? Well, um, this this uh, Hillary Bay, there's this something called the Solomon Guggenheim Foundation, uh, which is when those uh, two, I don't know, what one of them is called Circular Tension, and I forget what the other one, that, there's a black and white one that precedes that. Oh, of the greats, which made them one night. Yeah. Those those were shot on a camera that was either from Dick Foster or Frank Stoffiger. I'm sure it was from Stoffiger. The, the film with the greats begins with a color shot of what appears to be... Painting, yeah, that's one of these... That's a painting of yours. Yeah, that, that painting is here. That was a special... That's, that's a portion of that painting, see. Uh, which is a uh, painting of a tomb by Dizzy Gillespie called Manteca. And see, each line in that painting represents a certain note on the record. 
like if I had the record, you can project the painting to the slide, and then it can point to a certain thing. See, like the main theme in there, which is to do 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 do, is the, are those curved lines up there? See, do 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 do, and so forth. Each each note is of the painting is on there. The most complex one of these is is this one of which is one of Charlie Parker's records. Uh, I don't even remember the name of it, but. That's a really complex painting. That that took years. I just like I gave up making films after that last hand drawn painting took took like a number of years. I gave up painting after that thing took a number of years to make it, and uh, it was just too exhausting. See, this is one of Parker's, but it's a little clearer here that each each note on that thing is. Uh, laid uh, it, like this dot for each note and then the phrases that the notes consist of are, are like colored in a certain way or made in a certain path and all that kind of thing. The, the, those are very interesting paintings. The the last paintings that I made were realistic uh, things connected with the Tower of Babel. There was a very good one of the control room of the Tower of Babel which was built into a railway car leaving it. That that was derived from a scene in, in Buster Keaton's film The General of where he chops out the end of the of the box hmm. car. But in this case it, it shows uh there's a special film is projected onto that painting so that all the machinery operates and all that kind of things. And uh, in a number of cases I've made special screens to project films on. See like all of those uh so called early abstractions were really uh there were special painted screens that they went on to that had all of the like they were made up of like dots and things uh, it was an unusual opportunity because I, I these Kiowa Indians were extremely uh, conservative they hadn't really been studied very much but for some various reasons uh, I got involved with them so that they told me all their myths and everything and it was uh, seemed like better maybe to devote quite a bit of time to that. That's why the fact I'm living in this hotel room, see, because despite the fact that the, I can't afford the hotel room, it's like $50 a week to live here, but I'm more or less able to sort of spend my time doing that one thing. Do you spend much time a day doing that? Quite a bit, yeah. I mean, at least I write the uh, material for it. While I'm looking this over, could you say anything about... I'm, I'm very puzzled as to why you have a great fascination to visualize music in the paintings and in, Gosh, in the That films. is an interesting question, isn't it? I don't know. I, mean, I had always thought that, that the geometrical idea had, had come out of a, oh, like uh, Chilichev's uh, magical sense, his, his geometrical divisions. But now that you mention it's, it's, it's an attempt to translate music, uh, I wonder why. When, when did it start? Well, uh, when I was... Uh, that, that, that subject was really never finished completely, was that when I was a uh, child, I, uh, being as I lived this kind of isolated life, uh, that I went off... Somebody came to, the, to uh, school one day and said they'd been to this Indian dance and that they saw somebody swinging a skull on the end of a string. So I thought, hmm, I have to see this. I went to that and... and uh, then I sort of fell in with the uh, Indians for a long time in, in around Puget Sound. And I'd sometimes spend, uh, you know, like three, four months in with them. This is before you were 20? Yeah, it was while I was during like summer vacation or sometimes in the winter while I was going to high school and that sort of thing. Or junior high school. Started in grade school. But uh, then when I got into college, I was a kind of a uh, sort of a smart aleck type. In an effort to write down, like transcribe dances and so forth, I developed certain, like techniques of, of transcription. And then I got interested in the designs of that stuff, in relation to the music. That's where it started from, of course. And uh, in an effort to diagram that, the, the diagrams are so interesting that I then started to be interested in uh, music in relation to stuff. And then after I met Griff Borgeson and went to Berkeley uh, and started smoking marijuana, that uh, naturally like little colored balls and things appeared when I was listening to whatever it was, Bessie Smith or something, whatever it was I was listening to at that time. 
And I had a really great illumination the first time I heard Dizzy Gillespie. 